All right, so another installment of the Q&A from the comments. Let's get to one more question here. And this is an interesting one. It says, uh, just a basic question, would it not be easier to take working length while checking patency in the beginning before processing or proceeding with rotary debridement regards? Okay, so this is a very good question because it comes up quite a bit. As you know, in many of the protocols that we have described in the past, we talk about the working length measurement, which is obviously a critical component of instrumentation, since you want to make sure your instrumentation is done to the, uh, to the proper working length and not longer and not shorter. So working length determination is one of the main components of instrumentation. The question really is, when do we do this? Do we do this right from the beginning, at the beginning of the axis preparation, when we have found the orifices, or do we do this a little bit later on? And if we do it later on, when is an appropriate time to do this? So this really goes back to the endosequence blend protocol that Dr. Kasha and I have developed and we've described. And there, what we have decided to do in this protocol is to tell you that there are two ways of differentiating canals, one in large sizes in terms of the, the diameter of the root canal and then small ones. And we believe that in large canals, in which these are canals where are like size 25 or 30 or 4 can reach the apex immediately, uh, these types of instruments, th these kinds of canals, the, inst the working length determination can be done right at the beginning, and that allows you to be able to then do maybe a step back technique to prepare them. But in smaller canals, the instrumentation is best done in a crown down fashion in which you will have a higher chance of achieving length without any of the procedural errors that occur in these types of thinner canals. You can think of it as any canal in which your size uh, 15, and this is something that I had described in the ESX protocol many years ago, a small canal as any canal in which a size 1502 hand file cannot reach working length right from the get-go. So canals, in most molars, as you know, in mesiobuccal canals of molars, you're not going to be able to get a 1502 to the apex right from the get-go. These are considered small canals, and these types of canals should be uh, instrumented in a crown-down fashion by creating some type of a coronal flare first, using orifice openers and some mid-root mid shaping before you attempt to navigate the apex using a smaller size file, like, such as an 8 and a 10, and then getting it up to a 15 before comp completing your instrumentation. So in larger canals or any canal that in which a 15 or 2 can go reach the apex right off the bat, it is okay. You can working length determination can be done right from the get-go, right at the beginning, because you can put a size uh, 15 hand file and it'll go to the apex. You can determine your working length. And from that point on, you get your first rotary file down and then you increase in size. And that's the essence of the uh, blend protocol as well. But in smaller canals, after having realized that a size 10 or 15 hand file will not reach the apex, then you do a coronal flaring with orifice openers and mid-root shaping uh, in such way that you remove all of the coronal restrictions, you remove much of the debris, and then you essentially are determining your working length last almost, where you, by the time you reach your working length, you have done most of your flaring and coronal shaping already, and all you need to do at that point is to finish up the apex and shape to fill. And that is the concept that lies behind um, the, the endosequence blend protocol. And I know that this would be kind of um, contradictory, if you will, to some of the other ways of teaching around the world. Historically, people always argued that you get down to the apex right off the bat, you increase it with lots of hand filing, you get the, the size large enough, and then you finish up your flaring and, and, and finish up the shaping. But this type of instrumentation using hand file with stainless steel hand file especially, is prone to a lot of procedural errors because this is the time where you try to navigate and catheterize a canal that is very thin, stainless steel instruments, and you can push debris and block yourself. You can also cause other problems such as pushing through a mass of necrotic tissue and then pistoning up and down. Not only you create a lot of debris, but you also push that debris out apically. You could potentially have more post-op pain. That's part of the reason why back in the late 80s and the early 90s when we moved away from the concept of step back to crown down instrumentation, we found that the incidence of post-op pain was reduced in patients because of this idea of cleaning coronally first, 
before reaching working length and then instrumenting the apex that reduce the amount of debris that you get pushed out. Also, when you are getting your working length too early from the beginning, especially around a curved root, during your instrumentation, you lose working length. What that means is that let's assume that you are about a size 20 millimeter around the curve. If you just found the orifice of a mesiobuccal root and then you took a size 6 uh, file down to the apex, with that instrument, you determine that the working length is 20 millimeters, and then you go through a series of shaping. By the time you have enlarged the canal, because you've removed some of that inner curve of the root canal, all of a sudden, the length that you have is a little bit shorter clinically. So if every time you put in a 20 millimeter file now, that can potentially go a little bit longer. Based on the studies, it's been shown that in curved canals, you could lose anywhere from uh, 0.3 to 0.5 to even potentially one millimeter of length in some of the canals, depending on the curve. And what that means is that if your early working length was determined to be 20 millimeters, by the end of the instrumentation of removing some of the walls, your instrument can actually now go a little bit flatter in there. So the length becomes shorter, like 19 and a half instead of 20 by the end of the instrumentation. And if you take a 20 millimeter file, you're now breaching the constriction and cause problems. So these are important factors that is what we have considered in the endosequence blend protocol, where we have decided to make sure that we determine the working length is a little bit later in these types of smaller and curved canals so that it could stay true and you don't end up having these types of procedural errors. So to answer the question here, that's a very good question. You do measure your working length early on in, 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 in larger canals, such as the anterior teeth, in which your size 10 or 15 hand file can reach the apex right away. That's not a problem. And then you can do almost a step back in those types of canals. But in thinner molar canals or thinner premolar canals, or even thinner calcified anterior teeth, it's best to determine your working length much later. In the case of the blend protocol, orifice opener, your size 25 or 30 mid-root shaping file, and then after the 25 or the 20 in a crown down fashion, you can determine the final working length and then get your file down to your rotary file to the end and then work back up. All right, so this is the protocol for the endosequence blend. And I, what I'm gonna do is I have another video that I prepared for endosequence blend that I'm going to share with you in the next video that is coming up. So uh, keep an eye on that uh, video that comes after this that is going to be the endosequence blend video that I made a while back, but I'll just share with you guys, which I haven't shared on this channel. All right. Thanks again. Thanks for these questions. Make sure you keep them coming. I will try to have this type of informal, um, you know, setups to answer these questions a little bit more detail rather than what I would be normally answering at a comment level. I'll see you guys in the next video.